why? The wide variation of stories within the Bible itself. Well, remember, it was an oral tradition. It, because people were illiterate, right? They didn't read, they didn't write. And so it wasn't written down until at least 50 years later. We well, think about 50 years back then, that was a whole lifetime. Also, Jesus spoke Aramaic. It was never written down in Aramaic. The first version was written down in Greek. So imagine playing the game of telephone. Do you remember that game? You're sitting around in a circle and you whisper something in someone's ear. They whisper it in the other. They whisper it in the other. For 50 years, and then that last person speaks a different language. <laughs> You're bound to get some variation there. Some inconsistencies. All right? But even still, there are some themes here that you probably have noticed that are in common. And I, so I think with these themes, we can explore them and see what, what might, what can they hold that can be spiritually significant for us. So that's what I want to do. And I'm going to briefly kind of go through these themes, but kind of touching on them. And I thought maybe next month I would take each idea and go through in detail each Sunday on these. So just know that's just, just, just really brief. All right, so the first theme we have, if you noticed, was it the, it was the women. <laughs> the women who were the ones who could see Jesus and who could understand and that Jesus appeared. Not that women are superior necessarily. <laughs> I don't think that's the thing. But I think... What it's telling us is that it's that feminine aspect, right? And we all have, we all, male and female, we all have the feminine aspect and the masculine aspect. So that feminine aspect is the receptive, yielding qualities and this ability to kind of sense the deeper, uh, etheric kind of, you know, subtler energies. And the male aspect is kind of the doer, right? And also analytical. An analytical mind is less likely to see a transcendent experience even when it's right in front of you. So maybe this is telling us how important it is to cultivate this receptive, empathic ability to sense that deeper, subtler, subtler realm that can open the door to a deeper, transcendent experience. You know? So practices like meditation, chanting, centering prayer, connecting with spirit and nature, yoga, you know, all practices that we can cultivate, that use to cultivate these qualities. All right, so the second idea is the empty tomb. All versions have an empty tomb. Everybody's going and looking into a place that is no longer relevant. Right? What could that be saying to us? Maybe we're focusing too much on what's not really important. On the mature, we're focused too much on the material aspect, the world of effect, the world of form and experience, rather than the divine idea behind that. Or maybe on a practical level, we are focusing too much on the problem. It's very difficult to see the answer, right, when you're focusing on the problem. Einstein once said, you know, you can't solve a problem from the level of the problem. In fact, maybe we need to move that heavy stone of fear-based separation thinking that's blocking the entrance to a new, higher, more transformational way of thinking and being. 
All right, so that's that idea. Now, in all versions, there's either an angel or an angelic-looking being, you know, with a divine message. You know, and so, which appears to the female aspect, right, that receptive aspect. So, you know, the metaphorical idea of an angel rep represents divine ideas, higher divine ideas. So I think this is really encouraging us to take that quantum leap into higher Christ consciousness so that we can truly see. Or so that we can see the miracles that are in our everyday lives that really go unnoticed. There are miracles in our everyday life. We see it from that higher Christ consciousness. We can see them. Right? Okay, so the next idea uh, is in all of these versions, the resurrection. Right? That's clear. <laughs> That's clear in all the versions. It's, there's a resurrection, which, you know, it's this idea of of giving of rebirthing from apparent death that reflects this time of year you know in spring the trees the the bushes that appear completely dead for months this time of year around the spring around the spring equinox are beginning to come back to life the hope the the idea of life coming back these little tiny blossoms and in a few weeks you know, all of these trees will be filled completely with, with leaves and the blossoms of flowering trees filling the air. You know, just walking by. Have you been experienced this? Just walking out and suddenly, oh, you're like, what is that? That is such a beautiful fragrance. And the, it's attracting the bees, which are spreading all of that more abundantly. So it's no mistake that Easter happens at this time of year, during the spring, close to the spring equinox. Because, you know, the early church wanted to ensure that Christianity would be more readily accepted by pagans, by people who were, you know, earth-based traditions, people who worshipped goddesses like Ostara and Iestre, I'm saying that right, depending upon what culture you're in, the goddess of fertility and spring. Well, they just kind of added that in to an already established celebration of rebirth and renewal and abundance of life. It just fit it right in there, made it easier for them. So now metaphorically, this idea of, of rebirth, of resurrection, can encourage us to look at places in our life that areas that might be lifeless, that might be asleep or dead or dormant, or maybe dreams that we've had that have died. Anybody ever experienced that? So is there a way that we can perceive that differently? that we can perceive it from a higher consciousness, a higher Christ, angelic consciousness, and see it differently? Is there a way that we can breathe life into it? Think about breathing that breath of the Holy Spirit, that renewed life into it. Is there a way that that dream can be a vehicle for a higher purpose, an expression of divine love. That's a way to think about that, to really consider um, when you're looking at that. Now, Charles Fillmore says, through resurrection, man becomes an inhabitant here and now of a new heaven and a new earth. Here and now. Right now, it is here in this moment. So this last idea, of course, the overall arching 
overarching idea of Easter is overcoming. The idea of overcoming despair, of devastation, of unbearable challenges, i.e. crucifixion experiences in our human existence and rising above, rising triumphant. So I, I believe that Jesus and, and other in awakened beings, of other spiritual teachers throughout the ages, have showed us that this little three-dimensional realm is such a small part of what life is, that there is this whole, huge, eternal, vast, eternal, boundless love from which we come. That's our true home, right? And with the resurrection story, Jesus lifts the veil and reveals that eternal realm of limitless love and divine wholeness and shows us how we can rise into that higher divine consciousness or Christ consciousness so that we can access that higher energy, that higher vibration, that higher divine realm, and bring it into our crucifixion experience. That's the point. So today, we're called to awaken to that higher divine idea, that higher Christ awareness within us. And it is our charge to bring that higher energy of divine love and healing light into this three-dimensional realm so that we can live more expansively, so that we can share that healing light with others and with the world. That's the possibility today. That's what we're called to do. And so today, I have a group of beautiful UCP members uh, who are going to uh, stand one at a time and read a specific uh, affirmation that is going to anchor in this understanding. So as they do, I want you to really get into that, that feminine aspect, receptive, right? receptive empathic mode and let it sink in really let it plant that seed in your the soil of your soul and let it blossom so let's start with carmelo if you would rise please today i rise as awakened consciousness ready to realize my full divine potential yes Today, I rise as the power of love, ready to share divine love with all whom I encounter. Today, I rise to seek the true reality that lies beyond appearance and illusion. Today, I rise with inner peace that seeks to bring forth peace in all that I meet. Today I rise in loving service to the one I see in all that love has made. Today I rise and see my inner light and know it as the light that lights the world. Today I rise in wholeness that knows we all contribute to the whole. Today, I rise to make my contribution to the healing of the world. Tikkun Olam. Today, I rise in service to the one that I see manifest in everything and all. Today, I rise and know I am eternal in a cosmos of infinity and love. Mm -hmm. 
the horn. Today, I rise and join all others as we seek the way to freedom and to truth. Today, I rise in unrestrained forgiveness and find the innocence in all I meet. Can we all sort of take that in together? And together, we're going to say, and so it is. Namaste. Thank you. Hi. If this video has inspired you, opened your heart, expanded your consciousness, filled you with hope, empowered you in some way, we encourage you to support what we offer here at Unity Center of Peace by making your donation now. And thank you. <laughs>